Speaking of kindergarten, there's a kindergarten teacher told me they had the mothers and everybody come in the last two hours, you know, Valentine's Day, how they make cards and all that. And um, they had a drawing for a stuffed animal. And um, a little girl won and she said to, her, said to her mother, she said, but mother, I cheated. And the mother said, well, how did you cheat? And she said, well, I prayed before she did the drawing. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl and Keith. I um, each Sunday are very um, proud that I can be part of the Zoom experience. A couple of my neighbors were kidding me about that, and I remembered an old line that I used to say: um, "I go into every service like it's my first, and maybe it could even be my best, uh, and then I have to consider it might be my last." But whatever, I I certainly appreciate, and Emily, of course, is such a such a big help um a little funny one that i used to use every once in a while it's a story of a father trying to talk to his six-year-old son and they were riding on to church just the father and the son 
And he said, son, I have a dollar bill here I'd like to give for you. You need to know that the church needs money too. So now when the offering plate comes around, what I'd like for you to do is put in the offering plate. Well, the offering plate came around. And if you remember the story, the boy kept the dollar bill. He did not put the dollar bill in the offering plate. So they were on their way out of the building, shaking hands with the minister. And the boy pulled the dollar bill out of his pocket. And he gave the dollar bill to the pastor. The pastor said, well, what in the world are you giving me the dollar bill for? And he said, my dad said, you probably were the poorest preacher he's ever known. And I thought you, I better give you my dollar. So anyhow, our call to worship, our souls wait for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. Yes, our hearts are glad in the Lord because we trust in the Lord's holy name. On this cold but sunny, weary day, let me have a prayer with each of you. Here we are, Lord, on this cold winter day with good intentions but inadequate sometimes action of high hopes, but sometimes not a whole lot of energy. And you, O oh Lord, are the one before whom all created things are given. We dare sometimes to, to lift up our hearts as we lift up our voices, talking to you like children often talk with a loving parent. But in Jesus, we believe we have known you and we rejoice this morning. The marvel of your world causes us to rejoice. The tragedy of your world causes us also to look to you for strength. So today, during Lent, beginning Lent, we dwell now with you. We rejoice, we seek ways that we may grow closer to you and closer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, our scripture lesson, uh, let me get, it's Matthew. Uh, Matthew 21, that's chapter 21. Uh, the verses are 21 and 22, but I'm going to read a little of it before the two important verses. Again, Matthew 21 and uh, verses 21 and 22. I'm going to start where Jesus said to the uh, fig tree uh, that he found nothing on it but leaves only. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they were marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, truly I say to you, if you have faith and never doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast in the sea, it will be done. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Uh, that's our morning uh, scripture, the lesson for our uh, morning worship service. Um, I want to talk about prayer. Um, not all of these things I'm sure we would all agree on, but I've spent some time, you and I probably will never have the faith that a mountain can be hurled out into the sea wherever we are. Um, it is a logical impossibility. Um, no rational person, honestly, I think, believes that they can do that. And so it probably will never happen. Because it is not possible for a person to have true faith without doubt that a mountain will throw itself into the sea. If that level of faith were possible for any of us, well, then it would happen. But it's probably never going to happen for us. 
Now, if you've ever seen a jetty uh, appear out into the ocean, maybe visiting some place and looking at the ocean, I love to hear the sound of the ocean. The violent surf, though, can sometimes crash against the huge boulders piled up on each side to somewhat slow down the sea. Now, whereas no person may ever have faith to believe that a whole mountain can throw itself into the sea, many have had enough faith that they believe that they can blast the mountain into a heap of rubble uh, with dynamite, of course, and then haul it off in some rail cars or trucks, boulder by boulder, to build a pier or a jetty out into the sea. Many um, construction workers have probably, in their own way, moved some mountains. And each mountain ever so moved resulted in someone having the faith that they could move that mountain into the sea because of the equipment they have. But I'd like to move away from that and ask you this morning, take time to think about this. What is your mountain? What is your mountain? What perplexing problem rises up like an immovable mountain between you and your God? Faith can and will move it Though maybe because of some conditions that are not being met, it takes a while for that miracle to happen or a prayer to be answered. Is a mountain moved by hard work any less moved than the one that moved by a miracle? In either case, faith for us moves mountains. No area of Christian life is more confusing, and I must say sometimes for me, than how to pray and what to expect from my prayer. Surely you and I have prayed in faith for many requests over the years, which maybe God did not grant. Was Jesus then not telling us the truth? I don't think so. Was he trying to make another point in the passage? I don't think so again. So this morning, I'm going to quickly talk about how does prayer probably work? The method of prayer, I'd like to break into two parts. The first is our part, and the other part is, of course, God's. Now, I may get into a little trouble, and some of this is personal opinion, and not everyone's theology is exactly the same. I believe our part in prayer is to believe. Let me underline the word believe. Whatever need or desire we have, we bring it to Christ in faith, believing that Christ is able. Now, we don't have to believe that God will do it in a certain time, but we believe God can do it at some time. So it's important for us, first of all, to believe. Believing that God will do what you request and that it will, the second thing is that it will be, and here's the catcher, here's the catcher in the mystery. We have to believe it is God's will. That's a biggie. Now let's look at God's part. God's part in prayer is to do whatever God wants. Uh, that, that may sound like I'm trying to be funny, but that's the way it is. God's part in prayer is to do whatever God wants. This is the confidence we have in approaching a holy God. That if we ask something according to God's will, we're back to that stuff again, according to God's will, he will hear us. And if we know that, I believe it can help in some of the mystery of prayer. God hears every prayer offered according to his will. We then can pray two kinds of prayers. Prayers that agree with God's will and prayers that don't agree with God's will. 
the ones that agree he hears and enlarges our faith in all of that. Now, we don't always understand God's will. Um, I, as a pastor, have been frustrated many times when, for instance, I have prayed for someone that I know was ill and to have that person to be healed. And for many years, I thought healing means that they got to live if that's the way it should be. And I have learned over the years that God heals all of us, whether we live through the illness or not. Sometimes our bodies become very weary and very old and tired. So sometimes when I pray, I don't always get my way. And when I particularly pray for some of you, because God's will may be different than that part. I must also say that I don't like the way some people make a grandstand out of prayer. When I was uh, playing a little high school, a little college ball, uh, we had a rule by two different coaches. And the coaches were, if you want to pray, you pray before we go out on the court or out on the field. Nothing bothers me more than to watch a camera zoom in and all of a sudden, for a minute and a half, we're watching a prayer being given by the star. Now, what kept the star away from listening to the scripture that we are told to go in quietness into the closet, I believe is what it said, and to have prayer privately? I don't believe prayer is meant to be an advertising technique for someone to, to have at that point. You may disagree. So which prayers then are according to God's will? From the negative angle, since our prayer is to pray in faith and not in doubt, then we can know that a doubting prayer probably will never happen. Prayer without doubt is a condition to being heard, but not only the first condition, the other one, if you remember now, is praying according to God's will. Quite simply, prayer offered in faith, which is according to God's will, I think for God is something that God always listens to. Now to say that God doesn't listen to prayer is, is, is uh, exaggerating what I'm trying to say. I believe God listens to all prayer, but the prayers and actions probably are going to happen have to do with our faith and God's will. So we pray in faith, not doubting, but not knowing sometimes what God's will is. That's the trick. And I must admit to you, sometimes I get frustrated when I do not get an answer to a prayer the way I think it should be answered. And the bottom line is Joel's will is different than God's will. Prayer includes our part to believe and God's part to do what is God's will. So whatever has tested your faith over the year, what prayer have you uttered that has gone, and maybe you can remember right now, has gone unanswered? And even though prayer is an absolute faith, and you know that God is able, sometimes our prayers are answered, but not when we want them answered. I believe the whole concept of healing is something that we could have a great discussion on. For when we pray for a person, let's say a person is sick, that prayer should not only be for that person, but for the whole family, because healing needs to go on with the family when someone is ill. Prayer needs to also be with the person that is making the prayer, feeling that kind of healing. The bottom line is this, never give up, folks. God listens to what we say and how we say it. We don't need to be um, doing something that has a fancy connotation to it. I believe the most sincere prayers are those that are done in the privacy sometimes of our own home. Yep, that's what it said. Oh, I believe God listens to our prayers in the church, but there is nothing like a prayer that you humbly give to God and share with God in the privacy of your own heart and in your own way. Let me read a little poem, and then I'm about ready here to, 
to ask you to listen to a prayer. Hope means keep living, admit depression, and keep humming in the darkness. Hoping is knowing there is love. It is trust in tomorrow. It is falling asleep and walking again. When the sun rises in the midst of a gale at sea, it is to discover land in the eyes of another. It is to see that he understands you. As long as there is still hope, there will be also prayer and God will be holding you in his hands. Uh, so it's time for me now to, to have a prayer with you and then we'll do the Lord's prayer together. Let me pray. God, we often have been confused about how to pray and what to expect when we do pray. We pray with our faith. We pray that we may also discover what your will is for the mountain in our life. Help us, Lord, to understand the difference between our part and your part in our prayers. We ask that you re-motivate us to surrender our life characterized by expected and joyful prayers offered in faith. Give us the faith to move the mountain in our life. 